In the 80s, there was a young man from China who was visiting America on a trip. So the place that he grew up in, they were thinking about doing a construction project in China. So he was visiting America to talk to a few of the architects and construction workers to understand a little bit more about how they build buildings. Now this same very man, while he was on this trip, he had a friend in America who was telling him about the internet. And the first time he heard about the internet, he immediately went to his friend's room, got on the computer, and did a Google search for beer. <laughs> and when he was looking and doing this Google search for beer, he was wondering, why didn't China come up? When he made this search, he saw that Singapore came up. He saw America was on the search results list. But he had no idea where China was. Now this was the moment in inspiration that caused Jack Ma to create Alibaba, one of the world's most successful online e-commerce companies. As soon as he had this idea, Jack went back to China, found a team, and started Alibaba at the comfort of his own apartment with seven people all nested inside a, inside a really, really cramped up area. At first, he was looking to understand how could he raise investment money. He didn't know where to start. He had never built a billion dollar business. So he came back to Silicon Valley. He pitched all the venture capitalists in Silicon Valley. He told them there's this really amazing thing called the internet. I think it's gonna be big. And I think that we need to build a big e-commerce platform because the people in China, they have things that they wanna sell. They have things that they wanna buy. And we're not only going to make Alibaba the greatest e-commerce company in the world, but we're going to make it international. It's not just going to be for the Chinese. It's going to be for America. It's going to be for Singapore. It's going to be for Germany. It's going to be for everybody. But none of the VCs would listen to him. And for years and years, he was pitching these VCs. He was telling them that I have this amazing vision. Please invest in me. Until a few VCs who were empathetic to him listened to him and realized he had something. Not only did he have the heart, but he had the mindset, he had the skills, he was an amazing communicator. He grew up teaching. He had amazing skills in leading. They said, we're gonna make you a rich man, but more importantly, the founder and the visionary that you are, and they invested millions of dollars in him so he can carry forth this vision. An amazing thing about Jack Ma is that Essentially, his story, it captures the importance of innovation. It captures the importance of innovation and how there's fundamental skills that position you to thrive when it comes to the future of work. So just always be learning, being able to build community, Positioning yourself to embrace complexity and adaptability. Jack Ma didn't come from the most perfect situation. He grew up poor. He wasn't privileged. But he had the hunger and the desire to travel all over the world, pitching himself, pitching his idea, and started as an open source project from the internet. Finding a team and using those innate human skills to lead the vision and build one of the world's most successful companies. And within his journey, you also get a, a sense of the principles of open innovation. Open innovation doesn't start with just the technology. It starts with you co-creating with your customers. It starts with you understanding that projects can turn into companies, but these projects create network effects. And now that we're living in a generation where there's ample technology, you have Amazon Web Services, 
You have Microsoft Open Cloud. You have augmented reality. You have virtual reality. Now more than ever, we need to have developers, designers, entrepreneurs who understand how to synthesize this technology. And more importantly, create value for people. Co-create with people who want to actually use products that are useful and affect our day to day. And I'm going to share with you a few people and a few companies that I think are doing that really, really well. Number one, Google. Everyone knows Google. Google is one of the most innovative companies because they open source everything. Even some of the projects that they failed at, such as Google Augmented Reality Glasses in the past. But what makes Google so innovative and always leaves them on the bleeding edge is that they believe in this idea of co-creation when it comes to open source. That you don't build something in isolation. What you do is you talk to people, no matter where you're located, and you ask them, what is it that they want? What is it that they're looking for? One of Google's biggest products right now is Google Maps AR. Have anyone tried it? It's amazing. If you try Google Maps AR, you see why Google understands that augmented reality and these new technologies are the future. Maps AR, no matter where you're at, it immediately allows you to find your next destination all by pulling up your phone. So when you're in a busy New York City street and you have no service, you can just pull up my Google Maps AR. Things like this, really think about what is the current need and what are the best use cases for augmented reality and then serving it to customers is more effective than just building something in isolation. Right now, Google Augmented Reality Maps for Maps is still in beta, but so many people are already using it, upwards of millions. And Google is learning from all of those experiences, all of that data, still collecting feedback. Next up is GitHub, a platform with over millions and millions of projects that allow developers to share their code, share their learnings. Companies like Microsoft are so invested in open source that they've literally purchased GitHub for billions of dollars because they understand the future. They understand the vision. Because open source isn't just a matter of the technology. It's also a matter of the community, the co-creation. It gives developers, entrepreneurs, an opportunity to build their brands, their visibility. Learn from other people who, are, who share the same similar interests as them. When you're thinking about this future, and we're thinking about how do we thrive in a dynamic future where there's always exponential change, open source actually allows us to stay relevant because it gives us open access to what's the latest and the greatest. Who can I learn from? And then, once again, there's Apple AR. Apple is never late to innovation. They're always on time. They're always thinking about how can we elevate developers to build the next generation of products. Apple AR has been in service now for upwards of four years. They already have a million developers creating amazing apps on Apple AR. A million developers, upwards to a million developers. And if you can expect in the next 10 years, that's only going to skyrocket as more developers get their hands on this technology and more entrepreneurs understand, well, what else can we use? How can we apply AR to education? How can we apply AR to business? How can we apply AR to homes? How can we help parents better use AR, right? Only growth is going to happen with this technology, but Apple three years ago realized, well, let's get ahead and start building the foundation, start building the technology for developers so they can get their feet wet, so they can start co-creating with us on what are the best ways so we can build our development stack to really, really augment the workflow of our developers and think about what the future of AR can look like. And if you look at the App Store now, you see that Apple is transitioning to a time where they're now ready for an AR-oriented future. Apps are still going to be relevant, but augmented reality is going to expose, in context, how we can better consume information, learn from our surroundings, 
but more importantly, collaborate and co-create with each other. So when you think about how do you thrive in the future of work, understand this. It doesn't start with the technology. It starts with you embracing community, being a part of communities such as this, Open Up Summit, learning from fellow developers who are as passionate about new emerging technologies as you, but more importantly, really being at the heart of customer needs. Being at the heart of customer needs requires listening. It requires being bold about your ideas. When somebody tells you no, you have to tell yourself yes. When you feel as if you have the best team, you have to run with your team. It starts with you understanding that you don't only have to be an entrepreneur outside of the workplace, but also inside of the workplace, in your organizations. Because the reality is, open source innovation isn't only happening outside of work, it's also coming into the workplace. And it's proven by Microsoft's acquisition of GitHub. It's proven by what Apple is doing, working with developers to understand how they can use augmented reality, not just only on the consumer end, but also on the business end. It's proven by what Google is doing day in and day out in thinking about how can we create an open innovation ecosystem where we list our projects, we list our products, even when they're in beta, and we expose ourselves to failure. In order to thrive in the future of work, you have to embrace failure. You have to understand that failure, failure does not mean it's the end. If Jack Ma failed to grow Alibaba, we wouldn't have anywhere to get our clothes from. <laughs> right? If Jack Ma had failed to build an amazing team and be able to inspire them and grow a billion dollar company, the world will look really different. But you have to believe in this vision that you can do it. That nothing can stop you, and more importantly, you have an open source community, you have the technology, and you're in a position to grow because you have access to the products, to the technology, and more importantly, the knowledge. So when you think about a dynamic future, the next 10 years of innovation, Understand this, it does not start with technology. It starts with you. It starts with you leveraging those human skills, such as empathy, collaboration, communication, sharing, being motivated intrinsically, and more importantly, creating a community and a space for others, a platform for others to thrive. Thank you.